Kid, seriously. Welcome to a Fearless Kid Seriously show. We're the only podcast around that represents not only the Western Conference, but the entire state of being for all podcasts everywhere. Now, every so often we get together to discuss the world and parts of it that happen to tickle our fancy. We're going to answer some questions that Kid Seriously got and find a topic from Nerdland that we want to discuss, to discuss further. To my left, he's our uh, very own man who looks like California but is feeling Minnesota. It's Luke Neitzel. Luke. How you doing, buddy? Good. I don't think I look that California, to be honest. I think you. I think you look California. Really? Yeah, I do. Well, oh, I, th- I think I look Canadian personally. I think you'd like to look Canadian. I would. I think you'd feel better if you looked Canadian. Well, I would have put on a flannel shirt if, if I would have known this topic. You're was a lumberjack, come up. and you're okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm good. I had a great weekend. Jim had a, a horror themed board game night, which was basically my heaven. So I got to hang out with Jim all night. I drank a whole bottle of wine by myself in like forty five minutes. And, and played, you were texting me the, the gory details. I was, and playing horror board games all night. So, it was fun. Yeah, I'm very tired today, but that's okay. I'm happy for you. You should uh, be happy for me. I'm, I'm not happy because your brother is out. He's going to be out not only this week, but next week. He is moving. Next couple weeks. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's a couple weeks? He's in Hawaii next week. Oh, I thought so he was moving So, that's why. And then the following week, he's moving. Okay. So, yeah. So, guys, at home, let this be a lesson to you. If you can marry up... And become a trophy husband? Do it. Because, yeah, he missed... His life is awesome. He missed he missed time in August because he was in Europe for, like, ten days. And then, what, he missed two weeks ago because he was in Tahoe. And he's going to miss next week because he's in Hawaii. Basically, what we're saying is Mark lives an amazing life. Yeah. So, uh, Pretty sweet. if you can do that, do that. You know, there's a... Uh, but as for us, we're going to keep on keeping on. There's something beeping. That was my is phone. Oh, yeah, okay, I got good. an email. I thought it was, uh, thought it was I bet it's from Domino's. Is it? Nope. It's uh, my son has soccer practice oh, on Tuesday. It's a reminder. So oh, yeah, okay. I was gonna say, did you That's know good. that? Or is Breaking that news: the Pumas are uh, they have practice. All right. So Go Pumas. you heard it here first. I heard, hey, they're here second too. They won six to one this weekend. Did so, they? Yep. Break up the yep. Pumas. No, no, no. Don't get it going. Me. Rough sports weekend for me. Uh, the Badgers got absolutely pummeled. The Packers don't play till tomorrow night. Uh, USC beat a good team, but it was so late that Who? I wasn't able to watch it. Colorado. Okay. And. Uh, Real Madrid got a bot, or they're on the bye week. They're doing that like European well, national thing. I, I, well, it's just the international break, but now they keep standings in Europe to try and make it like a league. Oh, is that what's going on? Yeah, it's I just, I it's like just an international break, yeah. really, for practical purposes. But Germany's really bad at it, which is amusing. That is good. They got that smoked is. by the Netherlands. Really? Yeah. Well, speaking of smoking, woo! Let's get on to. Uh, to Chill Pony's favorite game show. It's Am I Right or Am I Wrong? Am I right? Am I wrong? Or am I just dreaming? You're wrong. Usually we got two players, but this week, because Mark is out living his greatest life, uh, it's just going to be one player. There's seven questions. Luke is going to ask them to me because last week, uh, you had basically a job around where you were just kind of staying fresh, staying clean. I was testing myself. Yeah, you yeah. know, and just going after it. So that's going to be like what it is for me this week, and we're going to have to figure out next week. I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah. Um, but basically how it works is he's going to ask me seven questions, and um, at the end of each question, the point is going to go to me if... Arbitrarily. He, arbitrarily, of course. Uh, the point will go to me if I'm correct or... Um, if he likes my answer, if there's a draw, hey, if there's a draw, if there's no overtime here, I have to win at night regulation. If it's, if I get three and for some reason, or like three and a half, I have to get the fourth one. So that's just so Mark who does that. I, I don't do the whole, the no one gets a point thing or you get it. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying that there's, I'm, I'm saying you're either going to win or lose. So I like it. I feel like I have to rewrite this every week just cause I, I feel like we're kind of making it up as we go, but no know, way. There have been some shows that they have gotten away with that, you know, like uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway or uh, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. And so I figure, hey, whatever works, go with it. So I'm sorry. I'm digress- digressing quite a bit. Uh, go ahead. No, no, that, that's yeah. fine because, you know, you you know, if, if you are able to get your, your four, you get your 20 seconds of glory, which is never aired yet 
for you. So, you know. It's big. It's it is. Big. Everyone it's... wants to know what's going on. What so it's going to be. I, I wish you luck. And we'll I'm see. not wondering. I know what it is. That's true. And I, I do too because yeah, I made it at your it. request. Right. So we know. I think it's a little short. I wish it was about 35 seconds well, of glory. You know, I don't want the whole... We can always we can always add things in later because okay. we're making it up as we go. That's true. So, we'll you fix know, it in post. If you're really knocking out of the park, yeah, maybe like, we will give you like 35 seconds. Like this segment will probably get fixed in post. Maybe, maybe depends slightly. How, depends how spry you're feeling. Exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, it depends on um, how the brewers are doing tomorrow because <laughs> tomorrow's probably my editing night, and uh, if they're doing really poorly, then I'll probably have lots of time to edit. But if they're doing well, I might not as have as much. Time. I don't want to talk about the brewers. I don't want to jinx myself because I'm starting to get very nervous. Oh, okay. Your life will be okay if they, they go to no, the No, it won't. Series. You don't know what it's like living with my dad. Uh, I am uh, I think I do have an idea of what that type of scenario might be like, because <laughs> I have a family full of Packer fans, Yeah. and I live in, you know, Milwaukee. Packer land? Yeah. Which is the state of podcast, by the way. Is it? Yeah. Why? I don't because we declared it. Oh, that's the right. State, yeah. The state of podcast. Yeah, we said it at the beginning, so it's right. true. Cause it's this true. Will, this will be on the internet. Exactly. So that makes it true. So, wait, what are we doing again? Uh, am I right or am I wrong? That's right. Okay, so I have seven questions here. You do. Are you ready? I, I, I hope so. All right. Well, it's happening either way, so just bend over and take it, and we'll see what comes out. Question one. Why don't you just smack your thighs? Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that's... I'm getting pumped up, man. Why are you... We should edit... I'm going to isolate gonna edit that. that and, no, I'm going to keep that. It. You should leave it. I'm going to take that sound out, and I'm going to make that a drop into your 20 seconds of glory. It'll start now with you slapping your thighs, and right. then it'll go into your, your music. All right, question one. Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie is currently yes. filming, and we're getting news on it about every single week, and... Some of it's been unplanned, like when you, you know, lock extras in a subway car and don't give them water or bathrooms. That kind of news gets out. They probably weren't planning on people knowing that. But most of the news does seem to be pretty planned, and we're getting publicity every week, which is a little odd for a movie that's still months away and still is in the, the middle of shooting. You know, we've got official stills. We've even got a trailer, basically, like a teaser trailer that shows Joaquin Phoenix switching from being a normal schlub into the Joker and then... My question for you is, is this too much media that we're getting for this movie, or is what they're doing from a marketing standpoint right now a smart move? For me, it's a smart move, and I think the reason is twofold. The first reason I think it's a smart move is that this is a movie that many people will not necessarily want. Similar to the way that Solo was, the people are going to be like, why are we having this movie? We already have sort of two great film performances from Jack Nicholson and Heath Ledger about the Joker. Do we really need it again? It's going to be weird because it's not going to be Batman focused. It's coming off the heels of Suicide Squad and whatever Jared Leto was trying to do. And there was so much publicity about that. So I think uh, the first reason they're trying to get out in front of it. Maybe they learned the lessons of, of what, um, of what Disney hopefully learned with solo. The other thing is, I think they think they got something good. And I think they want to make sure that they get this out there and get people pumped up because I think they, you know, all the people attached to this are very high quality. And I think they think that this is going to be something very special. So this is interesting because you got the correct answer, but for completely different reasons. Really? Yeah, because I, I do think it is a good move for this specific movie, but I think it's the opposite. Like, I don't think that. I think they really believe in this character and say this character is a draw and that's part of the reason we're making this movie. I don't think there are it's I don't think it's comparable to Han Solo because Han Solo is Harrison Ford. Right? And the Joker is its own thing that's been played by multiple people in multiple different media and multiple different versions that people love. So I don't think there's that only Heath Ledger can play the Joker. They can't have anyone mm -hmm. else do it. Where I think there is that with Han Solo, where people go, it, it has to be Harry. Mark says that for one. Yeah. Every time you bring that movie up, he's like, Harrison Ford is Han Solo. Seen it. He shut the fuck up. Well, he yeah, but it. but that's the attitude of, of right. people that probably negatively affected Solo is is that where I think the Joker's a different thing because I, I and I think it's you know it's I I think you could argue it's the second most popular DC character that there is, even more popular than Superman. Yeah. So I, I think there is that, and I think what they're actually doing by giving us all this media is showing us this isn't the other DC movies that you've seen. Like, this is the character you want, 
it's not Jared Leto because we know everyone hates that, including James Gunn, which we may get to. But I I think they're trying to just bombard us with this isn't the DC stuff you're used to. Right. Um, which we promise, Aquaman we swear. completely is everything that we're used to, and I'm we'll talk about that more later. But okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm I'm gonna give you the point because you did get that I wanted. What I wanted, which I do think this is a good move for DC. I don't think they should do this for every movie, but for this movie, I think it is a good direction to go into. Are we talking about that trailer at all? We can, right now. I was just going to ask you, what did you think? Because I'm head over heels for that trailer. I love that trailer. That trailer drives me. Like I watched it I watched it as many times as I watched the trailer for The Force Awakens, I feel okay. like. Okay. I don't dislike it. It's fine. It's very short. I mean, it's him. I, you know, I, I made it once through the... The whole scene that they show without like the sound editing because no, that, that I don't sucked. like yeah. but just him kind of turning into the Joker is fine and it's a good teaser and it certainly doesn't turn me off but it doesn't super pump me up either because there's just not a lot of, of depth to it but it there's certainly nothing wrong with it and it's so weird because like we used to have a trailer show do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. well, we kind of turned this into a trailer. It is kind of a little bit. And, um, I'm not talking about Clone Wars. That's shit. <laughs> Whatever happened to that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Shut up, never mind that. Yeah. Um, look, I, I, I'm I, always surprised because we have such differing opinions on trailers. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I know that art is subjective, but like the way that he plays it and his facial expressions and the choice of music and the little dancing, how they, they use like an old sort of effect there, like... Everything about that trailer to me is perfect. And it's like, you know, some people have like opinions and you just don't understand them. Sure. I, I'm not saying you're wrong. Yeah. But like, I don't understand how anybody could watch this. Like my, I made my kid watch it, you know, cause she loves the Joker. Yeah. Um, I let my watch, my wife watch it and they're both like, this is going to be something special. And so like, like, I don't, I don't understand how you're underwhelmed by it or not, oh, not completely I, overwhelmed yeah, like I, I am, yeah. you know? And I'm not saying that well, you're wrong. I'm just saying it's weird to me. Like. And I maybe think, my, my, my I'm, maybe I'm so far off base with it. I don't know. But. Well, and I think part of it is that again, there's nothing wrong with it. Like it's, I, but to me, I don't look at it and go, that means anything about the movie. Sure. That doesn't mean the movie will be good. I, I've heard it talked about on other podcasts I listen to when they talk about trailers they don't like. Like if you can't find a minute and a half worth of material to make me think your movie looks awesome, then your movie must be really, really terrible. Mm-hmm. So there, it, there wasn't anything in there that is like, this is a must-see to me, but it, it didn't turn me off. Like, you, if you're going to put together, because it's, what, probably 20 seconds? If you can't give me 20, 20 seconds that at least looks good, then I would be really good. concerned, and yeah. they didn't do that. Like, if they gave me 20 seconds of Jared Leto, I would be very concerned about the movie and, and what was happening with it, because I hate that performance. I, I wonder if we look at trailers differently, like, fundamentally. Like, probably. Like... You go into it, like, does it make you more want to see... Which is its job, right? That's the reason there are trailers. Whereas me, as I look at them as, like, short little films. Like, do I get excited about it? Do... Does it move me in some way? Like, the greatest trailer I've ever seen was the trailer... The trailer for Logan. And, like, that one, like, got me. And not just, like... I was going to see that movie no matter what. I don't care if they had, like... um, I don't know, James Marsden just being destroyed left and right for like 10 minutes. I would just, I would, I would have seen that movie. And so, but I look at them as their own little piece of art. Like I will still go back and watch the fantastic four, that first trailer that came out and still love the trailer, even though the movie was a piece of garbage and I still kind of love the the movie in an Ed Wood sort of way. But yeah, I, uh, I don't know if I'm just completely different than you. Yeah, it could be. I mean, the, the, so the, the trailer that I think about the most if you're going to bring it up actually is the force awakens and not one of the, one of the first two. So like the first one is maybe like three scenes. It's, you know, it's BB eight running. It's some stormtroopers. It's Finn sticking his head up type deal. And then the, because and then it the was, Falcon comes in. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the, the things that excited me because they weren't, they were just, just tiny snippets of a world I really wanted to get back to. So that got me excited for it. Now, the difference might be with the Joker, because the Joker trailer is that, but it's a world that I'm not jumping to get back to. I'm not opposed to it. I like DC movies more than you do, I would think, but I'm also not... It's not like I'm like, oh my gosh, I just can't wait till we get another Joker movie. So that's probably why. I, I I also am one of those people that has had the thought... 
would this be a better movie if it's not a Joker movie? Like, if they made the same movie, but it just wasn't the Joker? Like, those thoughts have occurred to me. So maybe there's some of that hesitation built into it sure. as well. But, hey, hey question what? two. Oh, hey, <laughs> all right, <laughs> yes. question two. We're playing a game here. We sure are, but you, you got a point. So it's one, go. one, one for one so far. Sad news this weekend, as we, we say goodbye to a good friend that has moved on into another world, Netflix's Iron Fist has oh. officially completed its marathon it's run. That final fisting. Yep, yep, no more fisting for anyone, apparently. Marvel has canceled it, and it's the first Netflix, Netflix failure for yeah. Marvel, I would say. I, you know, the, the first season was a big disappointment. Um, and it's now canceled after season two, which I've seen a few episodes of, and it seems okay. I've watched all of season one for some reason. Man. Yeah. That's like a, that's a Maya Madrid move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, I didn't watch all that shit. it's just not enough to, to get people going, even though it got better cl- critical reviews in season two. Mm. Like most people said it was a, a big improvement and the little bits I saw were a big improvement. So is Iron Fist's failure, the first for Marvel, is this a one-off failure or are there more serious problems that are affecting marvel netflix shows oh promoter is a piece of crap he's not very good at his job okay because you got marvel and humans and you got i'm talking specifically about netflix i know but but like he's in he's pulling the strings like he's not particularly good at his job and that was always what feige was telling disney like basically like i want more ownership because he hated answering to this dude i think what you get is a really great Jessica Jones series, Daredevil, which I like more than most people, and the early reviews are, are pretty good on the upcoming season, and uh, people who really like Luke Cage, but Defenders was a disappointment, and parts of Luke Cage in the second season were a disappointment, and some people were disappointed in season two of Jessica Jones, and some people didn't like season two of Daredevil as well. I mean, like you can make the argument that this is all heading downhill, and de- defend- or, uh, the Defenders was kind of like... But why? Like, why, why is, is it, it heading downhill? Like, what is the the problem? Like, it's hey, dude, it's writing. Mm-hmm. Good show, like good writing means good shows. And in in Iron Fist's case, it was bad acting too. But it's good writing. And if you have good writing, people will watch your shows. If you don't have good writing, people won't. It's that simple. I am not going to give you a point That's on this. That's fucking bullshit. Even though I, I'm right on this. I, but... Well, I, I agree that it's that Iron Fist isn't just a one-off, but it is it is the extreme. I don't think I it's the right... water all over my face in frustration. This is bullcrap. Well, well, keep going. have better answers, and then it all wouldn't right, be a well. problem. I don't think writing is the problem. I don't think you can watch season two of Jessica Jones and say that was a poorly written show. I don't think you can watch season two of Luke Cage and say it was a poorly written show. I don't think you can watch The Punisher and say it's a poorly... See, I didn't see The Punisher. Okay. Yeah. Um, I... I think the problem is is we're starting to see the beginning creep in of fatigue. That's what I was going to say, and I know that's yep. your issue, and if I would have been like a Knights of Brother and just grabbed my ankles all the time to try to get a win, that's what I should have said, because I knew that's what you wanted, but I'm going to stick to my guns. What is the point of this game, then? I, <laughs> my <know. God. laughs> I, think, I think we are. This is yeah. sort of an existential analysis yeah. from... Because you got, you, you know, you got... You got five more questions to go. You know, it's time to think about who you want to be. You know, like <laughs> you, it's decision making time. Think, if you, uh... if you really think you know the answer and you're you're shutting it down, I I think that I, how common is this for you? And maybe maybe it isn't for you, but maybe it is for me. There are shows that I have watched unrelated to Marvel where I'll really enjoy a first season, and then I just never end up watching the second season or whatever because there's so many shows coming Can't out at a up. time to so you get caught up in something so unless you really really love something like i really really love jessica jones so i'm going to watch that no matter what because that first like season, i love daredevil i yeah i haven't watched luke cage season two okay which and i really like i haven't watched uh jessica jones season two even though okay. i was really into it but a lot of people just kind of turned me off from it and i'm busy i saw defenders because my boy i mean daredevil is my second favorite comic book character sure. so i'm gonna i'm gonna watch that didn't watch punisher so okay. like, I'm kind of off of this train. Yeah. Aside from Daredevil. Yeah. So, so I think maybe you are the good example of it's not like you hate these characters or whatever. It's just there's not enough time. These right. are long. It's not like a movie. Um, so these are going to be the first casualties for having a constant bombardment of superhero shows because they're more or superhero programming because they're more of a commitment. Than Let me going ask to a movie. you a question. Since okay. I'm under the spotlight here. We're going to take. Do you think 
that this means the eventual end of the superhero genre, or does this just a course correction where they'll course correct back into finding out what the saturation point is? Because it's way oversaturated. I, I think we are at the the peak and we're going to start seeing the decline. We'll never see the end of it. Like, they're always going to happen. I think I think this is the comparable to Westerns. Mm-hmm. You know, when, you know, in the 60s, everything was Western. All the TV shows were Westerns. All the movies were Westerns. That was what people watched and loved. And... The Western isn't dead, but it's, you know, one every couple of years. You know, they're few and far between compared to what they were. So I think eventually we're we're going to hit that territory. Um, but we're we're a ways away from that. But I do think that, you know, my my guess is, is this arc of Avengers movies is going to be kind of the 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 decline, right? Because we're gonna start seeing these actors that everyone loved and and was attached to start to move away from these these roles. We've already seen Hugh Jackman step away. Obviously, I'm sure people that listen to this know that Chris, or, uh, Chris Evans kind of tweeted that he was done, you know, type type thing. Like you'd have to think down, yeah, Downey Jr. is you know close to done. So it's yeah. you know, and they have great talent lined up. I mean, I love Brie Larson, and uh, you know, but is is a, a Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange you know, let Avengers team going to do as well as these Avengers teams? My guess is probably not. But I will say that I don't know. Because if you told me early on that Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, and the Hulk, and Black Widow and uh, Hawkeye were going to be part of, like, the greatest franchise ever, we would have said, fuck you, that's the dumbest thing you ever heard. Because the characters had no weight. So sometimes when you have characters like Black Panther who is awesome, but people don't really know about, you have so much more freedom to tell the stories. Did they tell the stories of Iron Man and Captain America exactly by the book? No, but they, they boiled down to the to the essence, and they made really good movies that they cared about. And if they continue to do that, I think it'll be solid. But, you know, the fucking Iron Fist, with its, its yeah. Iron Fist is bullshit. They didn't give a crap about it. And when you don't give a crap about a television show and you put it out there for the masses, you usually it usually gets what it deserves. Yeah, it's just a question of whether the casual fans who've been following these movies because they think Robert Downey Jr. is funny or whatever, do they stick with it as the people we're familiar with start to roll over to these next ones? Now, Black Panther is a great example because yeah. domestically, Black Panther outgrossed Infinity War. So there's a huge audience for Black Panther. Like Black Panther, I think, is going to be fine no matter what. And we're talking in relatives, too. So does a n- not a successful Doctor Strange Captain Marvel Avengers movie only make, you know... 800 million. Yeah, 900 million or whatever, as opposed to 1.2 billion. You know, is that really that big a deal? But I do think that we're kind of at the peak now, and we're going to start seeing that decline. But who knows? I mean, there are... You know, we're going to see what happens with the X-Men now that they're going to start over in, you know, the Disney umbrella... So maybe some things like that will revive it. I mean, you know, maybe we're all going to be, you know, in a in a year from now, we're going to be sitting here and matching Shazam t-shirts, you know, that talking about That movie looks awesome. It. It I does. like the DC universe. It, that movie it, looks awesome. It does, and can you, you know, you could say, you could draw a lot of parallels, I think, to Iron Man, mm-hmm. in that it's a character people don't know or care about, but it looks fun. So if it turns out being a good time, you could see that really work out well for DC. Question three. Hey. One for one. Hey, real quick. One and one. If you're Feige, do you step away now at the top, or do you just take take a swing with X-Men and try to do it again? I, I would think you have to be so excited to get those characters that you keep you keep going. He's like the OG nerd when it comes to this stuff. Yeah. Like he, and those were like his wheelhouse, yeah. right? So you stick it out. You do this whole phase. You make it yeah. like them and Fantastic Four and, and these new characters that he's put on the map and you know if you're physically burnt physically mentally burned out from doing all this then i get it but i i don't i wouldn't think you would just be like well i've reached the top so now i'm going to stop um i also think there you know for people that make it to that level too there's a there's a there's an ego force that says well i can always go higher that's part of the reason you you get there so no i think he's gonna he's gonna be there for a long long time i think question three as we uh, kind of have touched on, and we speculated about a few shows ago, DC finally was able to lock James Gunn down, now that he is out at Marvel, and he is going to be taking over the Academy Award winning movie, oh Suicide gosh. Squad oh franchise. Gosh. That's right, That's Academy right. Award winning. 
you you hopped on that DC train at the right time, buddy. Oh man, that movie is. I have seen that movie a lot because it is just. It's kind of like Fantastic Four to watch. Yeah. Like you just can't believe some of the decisions are the things that are happening in it. So we're not sure right now if he's going to direct, but we hope he is. He's writing it, and we're not sure if this is a direct sequel or a complete reboot of what they're doing. We're pretty sure Jared Leto's not going to be in it since he has called him a child molester on multiple James Gunn has on social media before. And but James Gunn called... Jared. Said that Jared Leto likes underage girls, and he once had a Twitter thing where he said, I'm riding with some people talking about what an asshole Jared Leto is. Oh my gosh, okay. They are so, not... I, they, they're not tight. The odds are that Jared Leto's not going to be in this movie, Fair and enough. I don't know if there are too many fans or people that would be pushing Is there anybody him. who likes that Joker? There has to be someone, I'm assuming. Um, and they use the argument, well, they cut most of his stuff out, which it does appear they did, so maybe if we saw the whole thing. But man, what I saw, I hated. It yeah. was... You know, the the aesthetic actually didn't turn me off as much as it did some people. I think they went a little too heavy on it. The but damage tattoo was ridiculous. I actually, the grill bothers me more than the Does damage <laughs> tattoo. Uh, I actually think the damage tattoo is kind of funny, but I, it, it felt like Jim Carrey from The Mask trying to be metal. Like, that was the performance that Leto gave. You know, I... I that's what I got from it, so it was hard for me to, to take it seriously. I, they were in a tough spot, though, with that role, right? Because you're immediately following Heath Ledger. You don't want to be the guy that follows yeah. the guy. You want to be the guy yeah. that so follows Joaquin the guy. So Joaquin Phoenix is in a right. good spot, because nobody gives a shit about Jared Leto's version. So they, they went for it, but man, it, it failed right. miserably for me. So he is most likely not going to be in it. Oh, good. The question now is, is what are we going to get in this new Suicide Squad m movie? Because one of the things that was positively said about this movie is that there is a lot of good casting outside of Jared Leto. So do you wipe the, 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 the slate clean from what was basically a disaster minus the Academy Awards and actually financially successful, but um, yeah, it, was financially. it was very financially successful, more so than Justice League. Do, do you wipe, wipe the slate clean and start from scratch or do you try to take what you have and make a better version in a sequel well here's the thing and i don't know if this is going to get me the point but i'm at least going to be honest and what you had with the x-men in fox was when continuity didn't really fit something or there was a movie that they didn't really didn't do well they just kind of forgot about it now you can't get rid of gal gadot and you can't get rid of the parts of this universe that are really successful. People like Harley Quinn from this movie. People like Margot Robbie. They think she did a good job. And I actually think she was fine. So, no, I don't think you can completely reboot. But you can say, I don't give a fuck anymore about continuity. I don't give a fuck anymore about like the DCEU and stuff like that. If we're going to have a new Joker and that Joker takes place, even though as an older actor from 30 years ago, like who cares? And we're all, our Superman looks different. Who cares? Like you have to go the Fox route because you have such a golden role in Wonder Woman to be the flagship. Like who cares what happens with Batman? Like you can't trust Ben Affleck. He's always been half in, half out anyways. Uh, and he has his personal issues too He's, that limit his availability even if he wants to right well this so. is not the first personal issue that we've talked about with f like over and over and over again i feel yeah. like it's he's just got a ton of drama in his life and just like deal with your stuff man like but we're talking comic book movies right now so you know re redo batman and if you want to go young go young like do whatever you want but at the same time like what works best i don't think you can get rid of harley quinn and i and i and i think um, Will Smith with what he was given actually wasn't terrible and that crocodile dude was awesome and I, I didn't make it to the end of the movie but I heard the Inferno dude do, dies and that's too bad like bring him back who gives a fuck like like it's just not like, hard to bring someone back in a comic that's true movie. that's true but like who cares like if take the parts that you like and if you want to reboot it do that and if you don't like keep Margot Robbie like people love that they still want they still want a Harley Quinn what was it like a uh, Harley Quinn uh, what was who they going to team with They're, they are making Birds of Prey yeah the yeah, movie's Birds already in development. Yeah. So you know what? They just like, hired new cast members. So, so if you want to use Margot Robbie for that, do it. And and who gives a crap about continuity? Because do you really want more Batman versus so, Superman? So so what does the lineup of your Suicide Squad James Gunn movie look like? Oh, all right. So I get like the free. Yeah, the like yeah, and you know whether you're all using right, so existing people or Margot Robbie. Okay. 
as Harley Quinn. Um, then I would go um, somebody as Solomon Grundy. I, like I said this before, I think Dave Bautista well, Solomon Grundy and, would and be Dave phenomenal. Bun, Dave Bautista has already talked about, has already started tweeting about wanting to be in. Is it? That'd James be awesome. Gunn, yeah. Right. So let's go with those. So that's like kind of your big thug. Uh, you your know, crocodile your, replacement. Your brick, yeah. Um, or Killer Croc. You need sort of like, I, I want something completely psycho. So um, I'd probably go, uh, oh gosh, this is... This is tough now. Um, um, I'd probably do Murmur from uh, from the Flash series, and uh, out of Superman, you know, because you want to get somebody that you can tie into everything if you want to keep these universes uh, going. I would, I would, t- I would do Metallo. I would do Metallo on the squad, or they're fighting Metallo. No, on the squad. Okay. So like, because he's like a military guy who like Kryptonite saves him, and so I would, I would play that like. Like, he almost died and then, like, had, like, a, a, a reason to, like, go against the government. And so then they put him down and, like, locked him up in here. And somehow, you know, that would be my next big bet in the Superman series, whatever happens with Superman. Something like that. So I'll go Metallo, um, Harley Quinn, um, Solomon Grundy, and I want somebody else from Batman. Somebody just crazy. I'd go Riddler. Okay. And just, and just like, and, and tell the, whoever it is to, like, not make it a Joker, but to make it their own thing. Because I think... Riddler gets compared to Joker so much that if you just did be like the animated thing, series Riddler, yeah, yeah. So um, go that, and I'm I'm trying to think if there's anything. And Hawkman, sure. that's an old office. Yes, show. it is. Okay, yes, Hawkman. Yeah, Hawkman. So, sorry, that's where I go. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. I, so I'll I'll give you the point on this because I do think you salvaged the cast, but I would have salvaged more. Like mine would. Uh, first off, we're missing the the best casting that I think. DC so you, have... you've seen a lot of this I watched it yeah past well and turned it I off, mean so. um Viola Davis as oh, Amanda yeah. Waller yeah, like, yeah, 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 lock yeah. that down yeah. as much as you can because that that's awesome and I think Will Smith was awesome and I don't like Will Smith but that's what that's the type of Will Smith I do like that was Men in Black I'm having fun mm-hmm. you know bringing myself to this role type thing and I liked him a lot and as you touched on, I would bring Jai Courtney back because mm-hmm. that's another actor. Oh, who's he's good, yeah. Awful in everything, but I thought he was really good. And then but you bring back Margot Robbie, and maybe not make her bend over in every single scene. Yeah. Maybe just cut that to half or whatever. <laughs> and and then I think if you really are uh, like the casting, and uh, and I'm fifty fifty of uh, Joe Manganiello, you make him the villain, right? Because. He's this kind of, as Deathstroke, this kind of unstoppable killing force. I mean, why else wouldn't you send a Suicide Squad after, you know, someone hires Deathstroke to, to take someone out, so then they have to take out Deathstroke. Yeah, and you, you've um, already ta- I mean, you're already making a Titans TV show, and so you're probably not going to go that route with the movies. You know, because you would save him, that's like the big bad for the Titans, but I don't think that's he's, actually happening. So. But he's in, Deathstroke's in the Arrowverse, too, so I think mm-hmm. they're not as concerned about right. doubling up on and they should, guys. And they shouldn't. It was just, yeah. they, he was already a bad guy, and then he became, like, the yeah. Titans. I don't want Deathstroke on the, he's too powerful to be on um, the actual Suicide Squad, mm-hmm. so you have them go against him, and then, you know, add in a couple guys. Like you said, I like the, the Grundy Grundy call, I think, with Dave Batista would be awesome. So I'm going to give you a point on that because I do think there are things in there worth salvaging. I ooh, Rick Flag though would be ooh. one because that oh that guy's bad and everything for me. I love him in the killing. Like, oh, it, it just keeps getting worse and worse. Yeah, I'm not not a fan. And they, I I feel like he's uh he's one of those actors that like Hollywood decided he's he's going to be the next big thing, even though no one likes watching him do things. So they just force him and everything on us. Did you like him? You didn't like him in House of Cards. Or did you ever see House of Cards? No, I uh, I saw through that season. I okay. didn't. I'm assuming he lost the election, but no, I'm just. But at that point, I'd seen him in so much stuff and didn't like him that I'm not sure how yeah. much he could do. Like he has to do something really good to redeem himself for me. Just an average performance isn't going to do it because yeah. he just annoys me now. Um, there are actors that super annoy me, and I've seen him in stuff, and it. You know, I Forrest Whitaker in The Last King of Scotland, even though that movie's not great, he's great. Um, Colin Firth in A Single Man is a guy I couldn't stand but he's so good in that movie uh joel kinnaman has not pulled that off no, for it, me yeah and even the killing i i he, he's better in the killing for me than he is in other stuff but uh i'm not even gonna attempt her name because i oh, will blow awesome. it but she's yeah. so good that i i think he's kind of just window dressing along for for the ride i think that's harsh but i mean she is i can't remember her name it's it's like it, her last name is enos she's married to um, Ferris Bueller's best friend Cameron in real life, Alan Ruck. Um, 
<laughs> I love that movie so much. Yeah. Cam- Cameron might be one of my favorite that's her, fictional characters. That's her husband's. And I'm sure you've heard the theory that the whole Ferris Bueller's fake and it's just Cameron's imaginary best friend because his life is so terrible. Because Ferris Bueller does everything that he wants. Which, you know, he has the hot girlfriend and he's super cool and everyone loves him. And, you know, Cameron's this depressed, neglected or abused kid. So. Oh my God. Now rewatch it. All right, let's You're switch gears hero, a little. Ferris Bueller. Let's switch gears a little because we are, uh, you were at two two points on yep, three, so that's pretty three. good. Yes, You're yeah. halfway there. Much like John Bon Jovi. Exactly. We are switching to a little soccer. The MLS playoff time is almost here. We yep. are two weeks away from decision day, which is the last day of the regular season, and the playoffs will be starting right after that. Per the norm, both our favorite team, the Chicago Flyer, and Mark's Ew. favorite team, the San Jose Earthquakes, will Suck. not be participating because they are terrible again. They didn't get the invite. <laughs> no, they did not. Not for a while. So I'm, you know, resigned to the fact that I'm not going to be cheering my team on to glory this winter. But uh, what is the one playoff storyline that I should be attaching myself to and following? What team or scenario Anything should I be to... paying the most attention to? Well, this is, you have me at a disadvantage because I haven't, you know. When the summer comes, I don't pay as much attention. I'm, See, also, I'm not done yet. I'm, I'm just going to tell you that you are probably get this wrong, but once you hear it, you'll go, yeah, I should have thought of that. Hmm. Here's what I think. Uh, anything to do with Atlanta, because they're going to win. Hmm. Well, Almiron is out now, and they perform horribly against teams with good records, oh. surprisingly. Oh! The answer I have down is we are watching Bob Bradley and LAFC. That was the other answer! Because, selfishly, I can wrap it back into the fire. The fire and Bob Bradley are the only expansion team to ever win MLS Cup. They won the double in 1998. Yeah. So the, the the question is, can Bob Bradley do it again? Go two for two, take another expansion team to an MLS Cup? And as much as I love Bob Bradley, I don't want him to. Yeah, because I, I want the fire to be the team right. that did that. So right. I will be watching LAFC with intensity. And even though I love Christian Ramirez, I love Bob Bradley. I, uh, I'm i more than happy to have you win it next year when the Fire don't make the playoffs again. So that is uh, that is a that is a no for you. So we are at two to two. Three questions left. Yeah, I'm feeling the pressure. The pressure is on. All right. So the big news in soccer, the more important news in Major League Soccer, is that Save the Crew appears to have been changed to Saved the Crew. Yeah. And while because I'm, of you. Exactly. I deserve you most did of the it. credit. Yes. A couple weeks ago, when I was in Austin, Texas, on vacation with my partner, I held up a Save the Crew sign in front of the state capitol and tweeted it. Pretty sure that's what put this whole thing over the edge. Precourt saw that and was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. You know, I, I can't hurt those he people couldn't anymore. couldn't take on kids seriously. Exactly. If that's... you take on kids seriously, you're going to lose. Too much to handle. So we are one for oh and say, or, you know, you know, one saving for one franchise. in saving franchises. One, no, one for two. Well, yeah, but I was the North like, Stars. Well, yeah, but I was 12, so... <laughs> I'm not going to be too hard on myself for that one. So, I am going to, you know, I am a generous and humble person. I think we talked about, of course, you know, in another episode about how amazingly most, humble I was. The most humble guy I've ever met. Yeah, heard. in cocky league standings. That's right. You'd be, <laughs> very, you'd be relegated. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, we will say that some other people probably contributed in some way of some type to, to help do this. Right. But, you know what? Just just walk me through. What's your all your overall impression of uh, Save the Crew and what this means for the league and fans, if it means anything? This is really going to put my back against the wall because I answered this wrong a couple weeks ago and I don't think your opinion has changed and my opinion really hasn't changed. I don't think the Columbus crew are that big of a deal. I think it's really awesome that, uh, was it Randy Lerner is stepping in? Well, well it's not Randy Lerner anymore, but oh, it's, it's the Browns owner. Browns owner, owner, but it's not Randy Lerner. Oh, then who's the, uh, Jimmy the Haslam. Yeah. Jimmy Haslam. Yeah. Well, here's the thing about Jimmy Haslam. He's been investigated for ripping people off because he owns Flying J. Like, I don't know if this is a good thing. He's done some cool things with the Cleveland Browns, and th- that's interesting. But the dude's kind of a crook, and so is, like, his family. And they're big Trump supporters. So, do I think, like, he should Says be some the Cubs savior? fan. Well, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> they, they, we all have skeletons, too. Um... So, like, I think it's awesome for Columbus Crew fans. And it's a little bit awesome for people like us who like to not like the crew. I know you're you're not big into that, huge into that rivalry, but they are, like, the No, it's our rival, and right. I would, we have we have no rival if right. they if leave. Be, so right. I want them saved. 
for multiple reasons, but one of the selfish reasons is, if, man, we're going to lose our rival. And we're already, with Cincinnati coming in, we're already going to become their secondary right. rival. So yeah. we're back. You're to, used to that, though, with the Packers and the Vikings and the Bears. Yeah. So. yeah, well, it's different when you're on the Western side. Yeah. So, so um, I, you know, I think, like, is this a big deal for the people of Columbus? Absolutely. And I'm happy for them. Is this a big deal for us? Absolutely, because that's our rival. But is it a huge deal for the league? Well, it gets another team. And, I mean, it is what it is. It's awesome. It's an awesome story. But I, I haven't changed the fact that I'm not overwhelmed by that organization or that town as far as the soccer town. I think it was really cool, like you guys said, um, that it was like the home field advantage. And we get to kind of keep that alive a little bit. But, I mean, those, those days are kind of over. It's a new world. It's not 1996 anymore. So, or whenever they came into the league. 96, right? Yeah, they that's when the league yeah. started. They're yeah. the uh, technically the first team. Yeah, so. They're the Delaware of. MLS. So it's awareness though, making people aware mm -hmm. aware of Delaware, which is the greatest segment of Conan O'Brien of all time, <laughs> and no one knows it except for me. All right, keep going. Nice. Uh yeah. Oh. I, I struggle because I think the big point that you're missing, on top of whether you think Columbus or not is, we cheer for a franchise with terrible attendance, terrible ownership in a very old stadium, um a, a bigger, more important market. But this nobody even cared about saving the earthquakes when they originally moved you know nobody cared about saving the miami fusion or the tampa bay mutiny so the fact that there's enough publicity awareness interest in major league soccer that billionaires are willing to step in and buy these teams at all let alone you know keep them from leaving a fan base is important i think for the league i think it is a, a step that we didn't see back when all these other teams were, were moving or folding i mean we've had more teams fold than we've had move uh in major league soccer history and that's what we want to avoid and that's what makes me happy about save the crew on top of the fact that as you mentioned with the north stars like i was 12 i know how much that sucks to lose the team you love so i think it is a really good thing and i think that uh we as fire fans should take heart because you know, we're we're a team that is in danger of operating the right way with a bad ownership and just everything. Yeah. So uh, I think it is important. So I I award you no points and may God have mercy on your soul on that one. So you are. I've run the table. This is you're in it. Yeah, you got two left and you got to go. And otherwise, I don't know what happens. There no twenty grab, seconds of glory, or do I just play my music? Grab, I don't know. You probably just end up playing your music. Oh, this just got enticing. Well, yeah. I'm just saying I know it's you, so you're probably going to do that. You may do that anyways, no matter what happens. I, I will say that how this game goes, I try not to make the questions. I try to make honest questions and then honestly evaluate your answers. And like, you're just trying to show up your brother right now. No, no. Oh. No, because his are very specific, and they have, like, he has a goal he's trying to accomplish when he <laughs> makes the questions. Which I, I respect that. Yeah, that which is very goal. entertaining. Right. But I try at least to make a uh, Make make my questions a little more. I don't. I just want. I just put down the shit I want to talk well, about. Well, and I think so. you beat him most of the time when I do the questions. That's true for the most part. I like that. So question six. Okay. In your attempts to run the table, Crap. Venom continues to eat up the box office. <laughs> yeah. He set an October record, and uh, last weekend, and he's gonna win this weekend again with about thirty-two million. I think it's like four or five hundred million uh, internationally. So. That movie's doing really well, despite having bad reviews and looking stupid. <laughs> but not far behind that is a very successful new adaptation of uh, A Star is Born with Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. And that is over $100 million on like a $36 million budget in two weeks. So that is doing very well. Now, this would have been a good question to have both you and Mark here for when yeah. I originally wrote this, because both of you are noted and passionate supporters of musical cinema. So... My question for you is, please share your favorite movie musical with me. It's The Wizard of Oz. It's one of my all-time favorites. So, um, I don't generally like musicals. Um, I don't... I've never seen Newsies. I've never seen... I don't even... Gone, is Gone with the Wind like a musical? No. No. Uh, West Side Story. I haven't seen it. That's a musical. Current. Yeah. I don't like musicals as a, as a whole, but I will fight anybody. I'll break a bottle over... A goddamn table and and stick anybody who says anything bad about the Wizard of Oz. That's my favorite. So that's the truth. Truth hasn't got me far tonight, but so so technically the answer is South Park, bigger, longer, and oh god, you're right. But I really don't. Oh, oh no, I really don't want to get stabbed with a bottle. So I'm gonna award you a point. <laughs> you're right though. That is 
a great movie. That is a great movie. It's that not, is a musical. Yeah, it is a musical. Well, you know, sidebar is that I, in my college days, and uh, if our listener in Kansas City who asked me about this once wants to know, I did also work at a gay bar in college. Yep. And they would have, uh, they had, this was revolutionary back then because they had flat screens on all the TVs and the, you know, the late, it was... Early 2000s? Late it was 90s. 2000, yeah. I believe. And, uh... They, and they would show the music video along with the song that they were playing. And Wednesday nights was musical night, which was Oklahoma. very hard. Yes, lots of Oklahoma. But the DJ would throw in a bunch of South Park nice. in there. And he was that was that he hated it, too. He was like, this is what gets me through. So, yeah. Boom. Wow. That's the name nice. of it. Exclamation point. Yeah. Here we go. It's do or die time. Right. It is question seven. Okay. Yep. It's still October. Yes. So I'm going to force as much Halloween on us as possible. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, you should. It's I'm your e- time. I'm, it is my time. I'm eagerly awaiting the release of season two of Castlevania on Netflix. I need to see that show. That show looks awesome. It is, and it's only four episodes yeah. per season, and the next season's going to be a lot longer, and it comes out the 26th. Okay. So, so get on it. It's coming. I have yeah. to watch Daredevil first, though. I mean, like... Uh, but you still have a couple days before Daredevil, and you could watch all of Castlevania in two hours. How am I going to watch the rest of Daredevil? Right. I have to start you Daredevil You could watch over. the rest of Castlevania. Oh, you're rewatching the first two I'm seasons? I'm going to. I don't oh. know. I don't, where am I getting all this time? I'm probably watching yeah. either. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Go on. First season of Castlevania is like a two-hour movie, yeah. basically. It looks so, awesome. The he, vi- like, she, like, walks into the thing. I got that far, like, where she's, like, walking into the castle and stuff like that. And, like, oh, okay, in the first episode. The look. Yeah, and yeah. then I was like, oh, I got busy doing something else. Oh, man, and it's it's got tons of graphic anime violence and crazy demon monsters. It's <laughs> everything I had hoped for. So I'm very <laughs> excited that it's going to be a lot longer, because 4 was way too short for the first season. So you are much bigger into video games than yes. I probably have ever been. What video game should be adapted next into a TV or movie that... Uh, that we haven't seen either a version of at all or a good version. And if you're going to take something that you want to see a better version, I'm going to need some details on how it would be a better version. Oh gosh. Well, this is tough. Um, I was going to say Grand Theft Auto would be hilarious. Um, no, um, there's, there's games out there that I haven't played like last of us. And there's, um, that have, that have a huge following, but I just don't know for me. Uh, I really enjoyed dragon age. Which is it's got fantasy, but it also has like a really cool story about these this group of people called the Grey Wardens, and they're kind of caught between uh, in the middle of this politic uh, this this world of politics, but also there's this sort of like um, coming doom of these this this uh, what they call the Horde and stuff like that, and so uh, it's awesome. It's just another fantasy thing, but I I really got hooked into the story, and so I picked Dragon Age. Nice. I knew I wasn't going to know the answer to any of these questions because I don't really know much about video games outside of early Nintendo. And um, I was waiting for Mark to be here and just say Contra oh, yeah, or whatever, yeah, but yeah. I wasn't going to pick that because I could just watch Predator and it would be more fun than watching Contra the movie. So I'm going to give you an answer that also sound kind of, or give you the point that also seems kind of horror-y as well. Yeah, it is. Horror it fantasy. Is. So that's obviously my wheelhouse. That means, sir, you have pulled it off. Play the music. You ran the last two. Play the music. Play the music, man. Just do it. Hit it. Oh, was it good for you? It was good. Some awesome. good stuff. I like it. Put my, my blazer on with my t-shirt. I think I think you may have just given me that just to get me through. Or maybe you... I'm not exactly sure. But I'm not going to question it. Maybe you just earned it. Hey, Luke. Believe in yourself. I do believe in myself. I have been I have been playing better at this game <laughs> in recent weeks, and, and I should. Hey, what? I saw a trailer. Maybe two? In fact, I saw two trailers. All right. But this time they were from the same show. Last week, you guys waxed poetic about Aquaman in a segment that felt longer than the 40 years Moses spent wandering the desert. My second biggest regret about last week's illness was that I could not stop you guys from spending what I thought was your valuable time on this earth discussing that dumpster fire of a movie and exposing our poor listeners to feeble attempts at finding the positives in that piece of shit. But I digress. Like always, I've returned to set things right in the world once again and to save the both of you from yourselves. But this was written when I thought Mark was going to be here. So just me. Just That's you fine. from yourself or the show from everything else. Tonight... We're going to talk about my guy, Daredevil. 
and the two recent trailers that accompanied the release of season three. Have you seen the trailer? And if so, what did you think? Starting with the original one first, and then we can get to the bullseye one. So the the original trailer that comes out, which is, you know, we, we meet Daredevil and uh, the old costume. And there's a little bit of the new costume, but we don't really know what's going on. Love this trailer. Got me really excited. I don't love this show like you do. I think it was a little over underwhelming, to be honest. Um, I don't like the hand as villain, so I'm glad that that is done. I did enjoy the kingpin but i i thought the first season moved a little slow the second season the punisher stuff was awesome i loved the punisher stuff i but once we got to the second half and it turned into electra and digging a pit or whatever i did not like it at all so i love the character electra but it, it did not compare to the first no so i haven't been excited for the show to come out, but this is this was a really good trailer. Like I didn't know what was going on. I love that old black costume that he wears, so I was excited to see that back. Um, it it got me excited, and I really did not see that coming. So I bet you're slightly shocked, but I I really dug this trailer. Um, how could you not? I'm not shocked. No, <laughs> it's it's understandable and correct. First of all, they talk a lot in this trailer about religion, and that's putting the focus on Matt Murdock and what makes him an interesting character is this this guilt that he has and this constant back and forth between his religious life and his his what he does at night. And for somebody who is a Christian like me, um, it's it's kind of an allegory for just like sin in our life. And, and it's, it's the only character who really does that, at least the one that, that hits home for me. Um, so whenever I see religion in Matt Murdock, that's, it's right in my wheelhouse. Um, the Fisk is right out the Fisk in this trailer. He's right out of the comics. Yeah. He this is. is like right white suit. No, the white suit, but also the attitude of him, like pulling one over and turning into the good guy. And I know that Punisher was the, the highlight of the show, but for me, that first season of Fisk, Fisk is the best villain of the show. I think, I, I, I love the high of where Punisher hits by the fourth episode, but like overall, like Fisk is the guy. And I'm so, so glad that he's here. And I'm so glad that he's turning the, the hero into the villain. It's so topical um, with today's age. The, the showrunner basically said that this is his response to American politics. And it's just beautiful. The, the, the worry I have is that it's very similar to The Dark Knight. But the comics that it's based on were written before The Dark Knight. And so then we get into that age-old question, like, what is the true source material? You know, is Daredevil a copy of Batman or is Batman a copy of Daredevil? And does it matter when we've seen? We, we talked about that hallway um, shot where it was like shot for shot from um, Old Boy. And that really bothers you. Whereas, because I saw this first, I think it puts it in a different frame of mind. And I think a lot of people are going to look at this and be like, oh, this is kind of like The Dark Knight. And... Yeah, well, and that's always the problem with right. Daredevil and Batman in any aspect is that they're very similar so characters. Uh, I I wasn't that worried about that from the standpoint that I think they're doing different things because the the Dark Knight is about the build up to that decision mm -hmm. of being the bad guy or whatever, or you know being perceived as the bad guy for. I mean, he's only perceived as the bad guy for the last 30 seconds. Yeah, that's true. And everyone forgets it immediately in the Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises. Like, there isn't anyone who's going, no, we shouldn't have Batman back at any point in that movie. So they don't really deal with what it's like when he is the actual back of God, or bad guy. They skip that, or perceived as the bad guy. They skip that part. And this Daredevil series looks to be exploring that part, which I, I think is fascinating, and I think it's, it's uncharted territory for... Batman movies other than, you know, a minor subplot in Batman Returns that mm -hmm. it really doesn't pay off. So I, I, I don't think that's a drawback at all. Okay, good. Then we get, uh, also they have that nun character, which I don't want to spoil for you or... I know viewers. what it is, but... Okay. Um, and then the imposter, who we'll talk about in the next trailer. Let's talk about trailer two. This is the Bullseye trailer. What are your thoughts on the Bullseye trailer? Hated it. Me too. Hated everything about yeah, it. Yeah, me too. Gave away way too much. All, all the fun and kind of mystery of the first trailer that seemed intriguing, they just told us yeah. in this trailer. And I don't... I, I'm not going to say I know a ton about Bullseye. I didn't read Daredevil. I did see Colin Farrell do whatever he ah, did shut the fuck up. You're in that, that movie, which was entertaining. He was the most entertaining part of that, even if he was not on the scenery, like in giant chunks. Uh, I didn't find anything about this Bullseye compelling or interesting. In fact, I thought they made him seem rather bland. 
And why did we need to know Bullseye's the guy dressing up as, as Daredevil? It just robbed a bunch of the fun. I would have rather they just not made this trailer and included that Bullseye hat, a shot of that Bullseye hat in the first trailer to show us that Bullseye is right. going to if be there. If that's what you wanted. Yeah, yeah. but it, it would have told us nothing about the presentation of Bullseye, which would have been far more intriguing than generally telling us everything about Bullseye, which it seems like they did. Yeah, I uh, I worry about it because the performance, like, the performance doesn't seem sort of off-kilter enough. This is a guy who, you know, will find the apartment of your girlfriend and then choke her to death with, like, a hair dryer, or try to choke her to death with, like, a like a hair dryer cord. Like, he's completely, like, insane, and he, he just felt, like, way too sane. This is a, this is a guy who... If depending on what story you believe um, about his his background, was a minor league pitcher and like on purpose hit, beamed somebody in the head and killed them. And uh, well, and then that there was that one time too where a lady was snoring on a plane and he like bounced a <laughs> peanut in her mouth, which is the <laughs> best. It is the best part of that movie, by the way. He se um, he seemed like in this version to me, he seemed like it was a redo of what we kind of already got with Punisher, just less interesting and angsty right and and obviously more of a bad guy but i do love this that this this is a great comic book villain and i think he's he's great besides my worry about the performance um and we'll see how it ends up but i'm happy that he's getting his time i wanted him in the first or second season but i'm happy that we're getting him and it seems like as a big part i didn't like the fact that they split punisher and electra i wish it was sure. just a story about punisher or a story about electra so i'm happy that he is kind of front and center with this and and fisk will be there too obviously but it's more you could have cut that season down with a knife from the moment yeah. that like punisher gets arrested in the fourth episode to when he comes home and then electra's that that was the best part about daredevil that yeah. 20 minutes when punisher gets arrested and then he gets home and she's in there but it was basically two different seasons in season two. Yeah, and it, it killed it for me. And they yeah. did a similar thing in the first season of Luke Cage. Yeah. When they killed uh, Marishal Ali, that that season flatlined completely. Like The follow-up villain was not interesting at all, and it dragged to a death. So um, hopefully they've learned that lesson and are going to make Bullseye go over the course of that. But that was something I was actually thinking about is, you know, obviously Kingpin's the major villain could this be a we're showing you everything about bullseye and it turns out bullseye is you know four of ten episodes could be you know i mean i, I suppose there's part of me that would appreciate that and would, but I, I don't think that's what's happening but um maybe they have some surprises for us but then again is everyone gonna be pissed off if you only you introduce bullseye after people wanting him for three seasons and you don't get you don't do much with him Right. So I I could have done without this trailer. Yeah, me too. Which is sad because I love Bullseye. Yeah. You know what else I love? What? Real Madrid. Okay. And we have some other nerd news. And I'm a nerd. We have news for the beautiful people. There's a lot more of us in our view. You know that I've been a big Madrid fan for more than a decade. Started watching the team right after the 2006 world cup when you first got me into soccer started watching madrid first because of my friends when i lived out in virginia um couldn't stand david beckham so i thought it'd be fun to cheer for a team that they didn't like and when i first watched i was mystified by the ball skills of a player named robinho um and from there i pretty much got hooked i watched every game that season and had like a new passion was super into it this year hasn't been very good but for 12 years the team has been on an incredible one or incredible run with champions league finals and has a decent share of La Liga titles when you think about how incredible their biggest rival has been over that same period of time and how good Leo Messi and that crew have been. My all-time favorite player has been Cristiano Ronaldo, who has been one of the best players of all time and has been such a source of happiness and pride for me over the years. A few weeks ago, a German newspaper released information of their investigation into the allegations of sexual assault. I read the allegations and some of the details, and I'm absolutely horrified. I don't really want to get into specifics about what happened um, to this this woman, but I believe her. I've argued with friends about whether or not Ronaldo deserves the benefit of the doubt and due process. But the facts are that this is not the first time that he's been accused, and the details are so specific and damning that if this were made up, there's no way that someone would put these details out there in this way. Ultimately, this is a story about the victim, and I don't want to minimize it at all by making it about us, but a theme of the show, especially since Mark has come on, has been about how we respond when the sports heroes in our lives turn out to be terrible, horrible people. 
whether it's been Paul Molitor, Brett Favre, uh, Adrian Peterson, or Kirby Puckett, we've all had to deal with this one way or another. For me, this is the big one. And I've had a tough time watching Madrid or soccer at all because I'm so disgusted by this piece of shit that I've cheered for for so long. When the Adrian Peterson stuff came out, you said that while you hated Peterson and what he had done, he wasn't going to stop you from cheering for your team because of it. I don't know if I have that in me. How much does the morality of a player influence how you feel about the team you cheer for, and to what extent are you willing to excuse transgressions of the past in rooting for your team of the future? Well, I, I think that's not... In, I, I'm not going to say that's an inaccurate way of what I said, but I don't. I feel like you left some detail I mean, out of I mean, there. I mean, I didn't mean to. Because but... cause what, what I specifically said was, I hope they cut Peterson. I don't want him to ever play for my team again after he beat his child's genitals to the point he needed hospitalization. But I also said, I'm not going to sit and cheer for the Vikings to lose every single game because he is on the team, but I don't want him on the team. Right. Um, I would never buy any merch or anything that was related to him. I know Mark was in the same instance where he had gotten uh, a couple of years prior, uh, his in-laws gave him like an authentic Adrian Peterson jersey. So like a $250 jersey and he threw it away Mm -hmm. or whatever. And I applauded him for that. And I, I, uh, so no, I'm not, I'm not saying you excuse any of that or you go whatever. I was just saying, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna now actively watch my team and root for them to lose. I'm right. going to root for this guy to get off the team and, and be there. Because un- unfortunately, the sad fact is, and, you know, football has 50-some man rosters, so your percentage of having a, a bad person are significantly higher. But every sports team, organization, you know, we, you know, I, I made fun of you about the Ricketts, right? Because, you know, the same thing. Like, we all have people like that. It doesn't mean you have to cheer for a certain player. You can hate that a certain player is on your team and want them off your team without quitting the team and i i'm not entirely sure what you're asking because he's not on your team anymore Anymore. so are you saying that that now you won't cheer for madrid because they had him while he was on there or do you think that they helped cover him up because i I go you know i'm drawing parallels with the adrian peterson thing but you you mentioned the adrian peterson thing so that's why I'm, i'm drawing that is one of the things that i applaud the the media and fan reaction in minnesota was not forgiving like they weren't making excuses like they they were taking it to him and while the vikings the vikings i would have liked it better if they just would have caught him um i get why they didn't because he's worth a lot and all that blah 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 but like they also didn't they didn't you know try to welcome him back or you know like make it like he was a good guy they just kind of were like well he's a guy on our team and so blah 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 um, if I was to find out that they knew about it and they actively covered it up, then maybe I would have different feelings about it. Um, so I don't know if, if Madrid, you think Madrid had some type of involvement no. in it. Um, and, and I've read some of the stuff too, and I also believe he is guilty. I mean, you know, they're, they're the, those court or, you know, leaked documents of what he said to his lawyers, you know, he's claiming that that information is altered, which is possible it could have been, but. Um, I tend to believe the victim and this isn't the first woman to accuse him of something. Right. Um, so I, you know, I think he did it, but I don't think, you know, like if you had Ronaldo stuff, um, and I think I got you a Ronaldo mm-hmm. jersey at one point and stuff too, I would tuck, tuck that stuff away, donate it, throw it out, get it away. Like my son, you know, he likes Ronaldo and Messi and all those things and I, he can't have any Ronaldo stuff. Like I'm not. I'm not buying that for you now, you know, the same way he's not allowed to wear a Cleveland Indians hat or buy a Washington jersey. Um, The only other instance I guess I can bring up that I was in is that I have a lot of autographed Viking merchandise because I used to work for the radio network back in the day. Um, And uh, I have a a ball that is um, autographed by Darren Sharper, um, who is a convicted in prison rapist, we now know. And the only conundrum I had about that ball is that the other side of it was signed by Antoine Winfield, who is one of my all-time favorite Vikings, and by all accounts is a very, good very good person. So I just sharpied out Sharper's name, basically. Um, and if the ball had just been Sharper, it would be in the trash or mm. in the fireplace and, and gone. Um, so I, I think we have, to, we have to not be able to look past people's horrible, horrible trans or crimes. I'm not going to say transgressions. I'm going to say crimes um, in these instances just because they're able to throw or kick a ball or whatever. But I also don't think 
you know, I think if we if you get into the habit of being like, well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shop here because this employee was bad. I'm not gonna watch this team because this player is bad. You're gonna run out of places to shop and go and and do. Um, but I'm also not gonna fault anyone who says I'm I'm not gonna cheer for this team anymore because of this, or I'm not going to go to this place because of it because that's that's your choice and what you're willing to do. And I feel like I've kind of babbled on here, and I'm not sure if I have a succinct end, but uh, I'll turn it back to you. I don't know what I'm going to do. I know that I have no desire to watch Real Madrid right now, and even though he's not on the team. For, I mean, I was, for two years, I mean, you talk about going to Austin and doing the Save the Crew thing. That was me in Spain when I asked everybody, don't they stop Cristiano Ronaldo? Like, he has been a huge part of my adoration for that. I mean, I liked the team before him, but a huge part of my adoration for that team um, a huge part of part of my adoration for soccer. I mean, just completely entertaining. Completely, uh, you know, so many games that he was. It, it took so much joy from me. Is now. I mean, and I don't want to minimize it because we're talking about much serious thing. There was a victim here who seven years ago was a victim of of a rape and is now suffering because of that. But at the same time, like I. You know, I don't know her, and I know me, and and this is about me because it's my segment, damn it. But um, it's it's like, I, I, it's twelve years of being a fan of a team isn't that long, but at the same time, it's a lot of time invested, and I'm just kind of it's it's all kind of soured because they don't none of those memories it's about a third happen. Of your life, him. yeah, none of those memories happen without him, except for the first couple championships, the first two championships, the first two seasons of Madrid. And, I mean, that was a long time ago. I mean, the last, what, decade almost, he's been part of the team. And this is a team, you know, There's we joke about how I go back and forth with teams. You know, I, I like the Cubs a lot, and I watch the Cubs, but I also like the Dodgers. And I love the Packers, and I watch them, but I also will, like, watch some Raider games, you know. And, like, there You're are... once a Vikings fan. And that was, that's a long story, and I'll talk about that uh, some other time. But, yes, I was uh, for a short time. Saving that clip. Like, it's fine. I don't care. I was the fucking second grader. I wanted to make my dad happy because he just got custody of me. Stop being a dick, all right? Anyways, like, Madrid is one of my favorite teams. I'm called Maya Madrid for a fucking reason. Like, I, it's a team that I would watch week in, week out, no matter how good they were, no matter how bad they were. Uh, it's, it's them and the Packers, really. And the Cubs are really kind of even below that as far as, like, my identity as a sports fan. And now, like, I don't even want to watch it. I don't even want to watch soccer. You know, I'm going to a soccer game with you in two weeks. But it's like, I'm going to hang out with you. I'm not like, oh, I got to just see soccer. I don't, like, it's it's kind of, like, everything that it was built on. And, and I love the fire. I really enjoy the fire. But, like, I'm a Madrid guy. And I and I have been um, since I started watching it. That's my team. And it's, it's just took all the fun out of soccer. But there is good news. Now I'm watching the wild again. And so um, that's kind of where I put my energy because I need something to do when basketball is not on. And uh, the last three weeks of, or the last three games, I've watched the wild and they suck, but that's okay. I'm used to that. I'm a fire fan. So where can they find you? <laughs> well, I guess, yeah. I am. Uh, I ain't got nothing else, man. You ain't yeah, got, you ain't say that. No, it's sobering. And yeah, what a, uh, what a shitty end to a fun show. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that Aquaman movie, though. Well, I am Luke. That Aquaman movie. Underscore Neitzel on Twitter. And Mark is at Wink Martindale, some type of number, but I don't five. remember. Five. five. At Wink yeah. Martindale, five. And uh, I'm at Maya Madrid. Or am I? Woo-hoo. At Maya St. Madrid? Paul. Question mark? <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Kids Seriously. If you didn't completely hate us, feel free to hit like, subscribe, or tell a friend about the show. If you want to write to us and tell us how much we suck, or just ask a question, you can reach us at kidsseriouslyradio at gmail.com. Otherwise, hit us up on Twitter at kidsseriously. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.